I love the Surface Laptop Go in my review, but the one thing that really held it back for me was the performance. The i5 10th generation is a great processor, but with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage, it really was lackluster. And so what does the average person do when they're faced with buying a product that they don't really like? If your answer was, they buy another of the same product, then great, you and I are on the same wavelength. To give myself a little credit, this one's blue. And I guess it also has 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gig SSD. So it should solve the only problems that I have with my Surface Laptop Go. But in the meantime, I also upgraded my old Surface Laptop Go to have 256 gig SSD NVMe, which was a huge benefit. So now with these two devices having quite different specs, which one performs better? And which is the best Surface Laptop Go? Let's talk about it. This is an OISO, and this is the Surface Laptop Go improvement review. Okay, my fingers are getting tired, so I need to put down one of these. I'm gonna keep this one because it's blue. If you haven't caught my review of the Surface Laptop Go, you should check it out here. But in case you don't want to right now, the Surface Laptop Go is an absolutely incredible device with just how amazing the form factor is. Yes, it has a plastic bottom cover, but otherwise the design is very, very premium and incredibly impressive. Really, the design is quite comparable to the Surface Laptop 3 or Laptop 4, despite it being a significantly lower price point. I was really impressed my, with my use of the Surface Laptop Go, but the performance really fell short. And I couldn't really tell whether that was a RAM issue, a storage issue, or some combination of both. 4 gigs of RAM, many people will say, is not, not enough for 2021, which I understand. But 64 gigs of eMMC storage is a real bottleneck as well. eMMC storage is notably cheaper storage that is usually quite a bit slower than an SSD, just any SSD. And it's usually found on most entry-level laptops. And so I was a little bit disappointed when I saw that. And in practice, it really made a big difference. But then I went through the process of buying a new Surface Laptop Go and upgrading my old Surface Laptop Go with a faster, significantly faster NVMe SSD for around 35 bucks. And now, after the fact, that thing flies. Like, it is very, very impressive just how capable it is, and it feels like I'm really getting the opportunity to let the i5 stretch its legs. Now, most of my use with my Surface Laptop Go is in browsing, some office work, answering emails, and some light web development, which it handles quite expertly. Notably, if you're the type of person that keeps 50 tabs open at any time, I doubt 4 gigs of RAM is going to be able to handle that, but 8 gigs of RAM might not be able to handle that. Typically for me, while browsing, I'll have anywhere between 7 and 15 tabs open, and the Surface Laptop Go with 4 gigs of RAM handle that just fine. I really didn't see that many, many tabs frequently going into to sleep mode or refreshing in the background, which was excellent for me. Even when switching into other programs and back into, into Chrome, I didn't have any issues with tabs falling asleep in the background. Now, notably, what really makes a difference here is the speed of the SSD. Even if those tabs did fall asleep, or even if my programs fell asleep or went into a sleep state in the background and took up less RAM, they would be on such a fast portion of the SSD that re-accessing that data was incredibly fast. And so interestingly enough, the biggest bottleneck on my Surface Laptop Go was in fact the 64 gig eMMC storage. And just upgrading that made a massive difference. I think this is a huge opportunity for people who are a little bit handy to buy the entry level model of the Surface Laptop Go and upgrade. So then of course I tried my new upgraded blue model with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD. And ironically enough, despite the fact that less apps fell into a sleep mode in, in the background, since it had a actual slower SSD, in ter terms of normal day-to-day -day performance, it actually was a little bit slower. Despite being a hundred more in the base price, and of course it costs 50 bucks more, 35 to 50 bucks more to upgrade to a high-end SSD, and so, ironically enough, now I want to upgrade this as SSD. But based on the way that I use my Surface Laptop Go, I don't think I even need to. The only additional feature of this model over the base model is the inclusion of a fingerprint sensor in the power button, which does work very well, and it is a good replacement considering Surface Laptop Go's don't have Windows 
uh, hello IR sensing like the normal Surface Pro or Surface laptop. But that's really it. And so ironically enough, despite this being technically a better, better model and me being able to upgrade this just as easily, I think I'm actually gonna stick with my old silver Surface Laptop Go and list this one for sale. If you are interested in this Surface Laptop Go, I will be selling it on my eBay page and viewers of the channel can get a special discount by following the instructions in the description. But yeah, I actually think I'm going to stick with my old silver one. Ah. Now that I've upgraded the storage on this Surface Laptop Go from this piece of crap to a real good 256 gig SSD, I really can say that this is one of my favorite laptops that I've used in the last year and maybe my favorite laptops ever. It is so compact, powerful, and it is really the coming of the new netbook. I wish other people saw what I saw on the Surface Laptop Go. And hopefully to push that rebellion, I'm going to start calling this the Surface Laptop Goat. And I hope that everyone who views this channel does the same. If you haven't gotten the opportunity to try out the Surface Laptop Go and you are considering a super light, thin, portable, netbook-like machine, then you should consider it. Of course, there are other options on the market, and if you are more apt for Mac OS, then maybe that the MacBook Air might be a better solution for you, despite being in a significantly higher price class. If you are stuck like me to Windows or always need a Windows device, then this one is a pretty compelling one. Anyways, thank you for watching NOISO. I hope you like this follow-up on the Surface Laptop Go, and I'm interested in seeing what you have to say down in the comments below. If you like this video or any of my other videos, be sure to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. And it's blue. And it's blue. And it's blue.